This is Scott from KIG. It's September 11th, 2018, and today we're going to do a uh, runoff test and brief demo of this nice um, Thermal Care 30 ton air cooled chiller. Now, in this case, this was at our uh, customer here in Massachusetts, and they had it, and it was a tankless design, and they had a uh, partially um, complete retrofit kit to convert it to a more traditional design that has the pump and the tank and the piping and so forth. Uh, so what we have done here is we've taken the customer's 10 horsepower pump, drilled, in, uh, drilled some holes, mounted it to the deck, installed it in the appropriate place in the chiller, uh, and we have taken the tank that was supplied to them and drilled and bored various uh, holes in it and added bulkhead head fittings as needed uh, for both the suction side. Here we're suctioning from the tank to the pump and then also on the uh, on the return that's coming back to the tank here. So the way this unit is piped is again we draw from the tank we are coming out to the process with some big door, big doors here, and that's where we have the uh, temperature sensor in line going out, out to the process. Um, then the return that comes back here, that's what goes back to the heat exchanger. Uh, that line we did recycle, but we had, we did have to modify and move around quite a few of those lines. We have installed um, a flow internal flow by bypass. Uh, that's a one inch line that tees off here with a valve and this one inch goes back and ties to the into the return of the heat exchanger there um, and then we also have on the discharge of the pump here we also have a, a shutoff valve here to throttle back as needed uh, which is common with chiller chiller applications in this case here we have that valve um, about at the 50% uh, position, and that's needed to, uh, in our test environment here, uh, to get the uh, pump amps down to the name plate amps, which is just slightly below 10. If that was open all the way, we'd over, over amp and overload, overload the pump. Uh, for our testing here, uh, we hooked up our own loop along with our own flow gauge, which we normally do. Uh, we've done some extensive um, insulation on all four sides of the tank. The bottom of the tank is insulated too. Uh, we've uh, bored and uh, put in some fittings for this uh, glycol or water sight level glass. Uh, we have a, you can see that, a drain at the bottom of the tank. And on the other side of the tank over there we have um, the float level switch for the tank uh, we put in also. And we've done a, um, some very uh, nice and clean insulation right down to the right down to the pump housing there. We've installed the uh, pump overload contactor overload uh, infuses. Uh, to do so, we had to take this whole terminal strip here and move it farther up in the cabinet and remount and drill some uh, drill some new holes. So. We have run and tested a fair amount. Everything set looks great. So turn this on right now. It's going through a little retest. Now the um, the fans on this are 460 volt, and there's a transformer inside there to step it down. And the customer's given us the 575 volt step down transformer that we needed, or step up transformer in this case to to run the uh, run the unit. Uh, so we're just going to press the um, start button, our pump is on. Right now the uh, tank temperature of the fluid is about 65. We're going to go ahead and uh, let's run this uh, quick test to 52. fans on the top there it does create a fair bit of 
turbulence in our shop. The dual compressor chiller. The refrigerant and charge look good and everything looks really good. size of that tank, it looks to be, I don't know, maybe 80 gallons. Both compressor 1 and compressor 2 are running right now. So as we get close to set point, um, the hot gas bypass should come on, or capacity control. And the design of this controller, the thermal care, probably go three, four, or five degrees past that point before it before it turns off. Obviously we're not running a heat load right now, we just got the, the contents of the of the tank. The, um, so that's our pump overload contactor there in the fuse block. And like I said, we, we put an amp meter on there. We have it currently set, so it's drawing less than the, uh, about nine amps, give or take, for the pump. straight water today. You don't want to get much colder than low 40s really with straight water in a chiller like this because the R410A refrigerant is much colder than the evaporator. You can start getting freezing. You can see the hot gas is starting to cycle on and off a bit trying to maintain the temp short cycling but even with hot gas this is a pretty powerful chiller and we'll probably shut off on temperature any minute now there you go the um the back side of the unit here. Yeah, that's where we have the uh, float level switch installed. And you can see we use the mounting brackets also for mounting. So this unit's ready to go. We just got to disconnect and drain and get ready for our Trucker. This is Scott from KIG. Our website is KIGsales.com. Thank you.